Hello everyone, Giltar here with part 2 of my review of the 1 to 144 scale high grade Universal Sentry FA-93HWS New Gundam. Now as you can see, the New Gundam is in its normal unarmored form, and so I'll just go over the armor bits now that they're off so you guys can get a better idea of what you get. So here are the front uh, two skirt armor pieces. Uh, the back two skirt armor pieces that just clip onto the back of the skirt. Um, the front armor skirt pieces, you actually have to swap out the pelvis uh, armor and you know either use the standard front skirt armor or these larger um, heavy weapon system versions. Um, you have your lower leg uh, armor and thruster components, the hyper mega rifle, uh, the shield add-on with the rocket thrusters at the back there, and then the chest plate. And just to point this out, the chest plate is a, a, a front uh, piece. It doesn't have a back piece to it because you already have the backpack of the new Gundam, so it's not necessary to have an extra component. So um, everything in these uh, armor bits are easy to to attach or remove. Um, the one that the one bit that might give you extra work is just simply again the front skirt pieces because you do have to remove the pelvis piece in order to swap them out. Everything else you just uh, basically unplug something and plug, plug those uh, heavy weapon system components in instead. Um, I'll also mention the sticker sheets uh, because I forgot to mention them in part one. We have some foil stickers here which uh, have your standard you know, um, camera sensor green foil stickers, the eyes, other parts of the, um, uh, the model, fin funnel uh, yellow pieces and that's I believe for the front of the hyper mega rifle, the two circular uh, scope pieces. And then we have a, a marking seal sheet with uh, Amaro's crests and the number 01 for different parts of the uh, new Gundam. Aside from that, I do want to point out a couple of things now that the armor pieces are off. We do have improved articulation at the shoulder. Now, just like before, we can only move it about this far. So it's not any great improvement at all. But we now actually, because there's no armor chest, or chest armor rather, and missile launcher on the shoulder, we can get a more full bend at the shoulder there. So that's very nice. Uh, we can actually get the head to actually rotate 360 degrees if we choose so. We can get m increased rotation at the waist. Still can't go all the way around without, you know, sort of maybe unpegging it a little bit. But we do have the ability to bend it now, front and back, side to side. I also wanted to point out that I did miss the, uh, the calf thruster armor bits. Uh, they do actually have articulation. And I'll show this off here too. I, I wanted to point this out because it, I, I really think this is interesting. The thigh itself actually has some inner frame going on, which is quite nice uh, because it does add extra strength to the legs for when you're uh, turning them around or bending them because all the joints are, are uh, fortunately uh, quite tight, so I like that about this model. And I just like the fact that it has a bit of an inner frame. Uh, a few other high-grade Universal Sentry kits in the 1 to 144 range do have um, some components that are inner frames. Like, I think the, the Zok has an inner frame, the Akgai has an inner frame, the Yagdoga has an inner frame, quite extensive, actually. I'm trying to find a, a, a Yagdoga that isn't too expensive. Uh, but that's the sort of my next model kit that I really want to get. Everything else is sort of taking a back seat. If I can find the Yagdoga somewhere at an affordable price, I'm going to definitely buy it. Um, what else is there? I think I think that's it for all the extra bits now that the armor is off. So I'll move into my pros and cons list. And as normal, I'll start off with my cons. The, I have two cons, and they both are related to the heavy weapon system components. The first issue is just the fact that the, all the extra bits add a lot of extra weight. Uh, it makes it uh, really tippy so that you have to pose it in a certain way uh, without it falling over too easily. And the second problem is the um, limiting of the articulation. Not only because the armor bits get in the way, but something like, for example, if you had the fin funnels here at the back and you had the shield component on the normal shield, um, they're both on the left side of the body so that you can't do much with them without them clashing and basically getting in the way. And if you're like me and you don't have an action base yet, you're stuck with ground-based poses, which can be a little boring, especially when you have limited articulation, so that doesn't help it at all. So without an action base, you have the heavy weapon system version of the new gun of just kind of standing around going, I've got a big gun, you know, watch out. But that's it. You can't do anything with the left side of the body, and again, you're limited in terms of posing, because if you don't pose it right, it'll probably, you know, tip over and fall, and, you know, you don't want that to happen. So those are my, my issues with the, th this model kit. Uh, relatively minor, all things considered. And I'll go into my list of uh, pros now, and it, it's a little more numerous. So I'll start off with 
the the RX-93 design itself, the new Gundam, I think, is one of the best-looking hero Gundams. Um, first of all, because I just like that style. I'm a Universal Century uh, fan, uh, first and foremost, even though I love all aspects of Gundam. I love all the other design styles as well, but the Universal Century is the, is the um, sort of universe for me, um, to be honest. So I really like the RX-93 design. I see a lot of parallels between the 93 and the uh, 78 and T1 Alex. Um, what I like seeing is that you can see a, sort of a, a you know a, pr a progression of evolution from the design of the Alex to the design of the new Gundam. I really like that. Uh, the next thing on my pros list is just the level of detail we have in the model kit. The new Gundam isn't exactly you know filled with panel lining or overly complicated uh, visual design on the surface level, but I think it has a nice blend of mechanical industrial design elements and sleeker sort of more I guess romantic heroic elements because we've got the angular forms here combined with curved forms like in the legs and calves and such. So I, I like that look of the design. It has a nice blend of of somewhat real robot style and you know some super robot style but more heavily on the real robot designs but it is again heroic enough in appearance that it reminds you this is a lead Gundam for sure uh, another thing I like about it is not not only the level of detail in the design but just parts like the joints again you know they have pistons here uh, and just it looks very mechanical when they're moving the parts are moving around and it just it has a feeling of a sort of you know a, a master grade um, on a lower level type of design, so I really like that. Uh, another thing I like about it is just that the accessories, even though I did criticize the heavy weapon system components for causing some problems, you can't avoid it. With the size of those components, they're going to get in the way, and they will weigh you down. I mean, you can't get away from that. They, they're going to weigh something if you get all that extra plastic. It's just the way it is. So, aside from that, I mean, the real good thing about those components is that it's an extra option for display. So, if you want to beef up your new Gundam and make it look really intimidating, you've got the heavy weapon system armor components and weapons. And you're only paying 300 extra yen, or basically 3 or 4 dollars extra so you're not paying a lot extra but you're getting a lot back for what you're you know you're paying out for so if you are um looking for a new gundam in the 1 to 144 scale range i would recommend the heavy weapon system version over the the regular version because you're not paying a lot extra and you're you are getting some extra options for how you display your model kit um, another thing I like is just the fact that it is a large model in the 1 to 144 scale range. Um, for a lot of people out there who really like you know larger sized action figures, models, and whatnot, this is something that will be probably on your good side because it's definitely a step up from the uh, in terms of size from the RX-78 Gundam here, uh, RX-782 rather. I mean. Uh, this looks like a parent and this looks like a child, to be honest. It's, it's kind of funny. So the, the the size and scale is really great from a sense of, you know, the feel of substantial you know weight in your hands, the tactile feedback from the experience of handling this model kit. It does feel like a small master grade. And in fact, it's pretty much as tall as the F91 master grade kit. Uh, and one final point is more of like a, a bonus point for me, but it's just I really love the neck design. Uh, this is something I saw for the first time in the RX-0 Unicorn Gundam Unicorn mode. And uh, fortunately, after I did that review, and, and um, a couple of guys mentioned in the comment section that the Destroy mode also has a neck component, well, I looked into um, other um, high-grade Universal Century model kits that were made in the last couple of years, and things like the Yagdoga, Giradoga, uh, the Jagan, and some other kits, uh, mostly I think from Shars Counterattack, in the Universal Century there, do have the same neck component design. And the Gira Zulu, um, that I've, I've actually ordered the Gira Zulu, which should be here in a few weeks maybe, um, that model kit has the same neck component design, which I really like. And because I'm someone who really likes the design aspect of these model kits, I'd like to see how they're put together and just everything that goes into the engineering of models and action figures and toys and machines in general as well. Um, something like the neck component may seem a little paltry, but I think it adds a lot of extra functionality. I mean, it gives extra you know, range of motion you know, very significantly. You can look up that far, so it's great for posing. And also when it looks up, it, it, it maintains a sense that this thing has a neck and not just some sort of peg joint or a ball joint. So I, that little extra added touch really you know, results in a lot of extra benefit from my, you know, perspective. So I really like that aspect of this model kit as well. I mean, overall, it's a great design as a model kit. I really enjoy and like the, the, the design of the new Gundam itself um, uh, as a, you know, a mecha design. So um, I would have to say I really give this thing a hefty, hearty recommendation. If you're looking for a new Gundam, um, this is the one to go for. 
Some people may not like the master grade version. I think the master grade version may be, uh, this, like the high grade version, may be uh, a little better in terms of overall proportions. So until there's a version 2.0 of the, of the new Gundam in the master grade line, um, the high grade Universal Sentry is a viable alter alternative, and I definitely recommend it. So I hope you guys enjoyed my review and got something out of it. Uh, I'll have my Sazabi review probably up sometime in the next day or two. And uh, both of these model kits have nothing but a, a nice, fun experience in putting them together and you know just getting to know them. So again, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time with the uh, Sazabi.